Hello, welcome to a very sunny autumn morning here at Oliver's Greenhouse. Autumn has arrived with, hang on a minute. Autumn has arrived with some beautiful covers and obviously the kind of weather you'd expect. It's been particularly foul here uh, the last part of this week. And uh, as some of you follow me on Instagram may be aware, I've been spending that time putting up the bubble wrap to insulate the greenhouse. And unfortunately, I've lost the piece which goes over the door. So that's going to be an absolute faff. I don't know where it is. I've had a look through the sheds. I've even had a look in the attic because most of this stuff off the roof because I need to use the air vents that much more in summer. They're just not, this place is buttoned down during winter. So it all gets rolled up, bundled up. It's all labeled and it goes up into the attic out of the way. So I've had a look up there. I don't know where it's gone. So I have to get a new bit of bubble wrap for the door because obviously all the, uh, the the nice warm air is disappearing out of the door gaps at the moment. So anyway, as promised in this video, it's basically uh, for all of my patrons out there. Uh, they were requesting uh, a, a, a range of different things to have a look at, but mainly uh, the miniature orchids and the, uh, the carnivorous bog garden, which we planted up uh, in oh, I say mid summer this year. Uh, that's done really really well. So I did a little bit of filming of that the other week out the front, and we're going to uh, we're, we're going to watch that now. Okay, so as requested by my lovely patrons, I'm going to be doing an update on the bog garden that we planted earlier this year. Now it's done really really well, considering we've had such a hot dry summer, and I mean it's been unbelievable. It's probably the, it's the hottest summer I can remember in literally ages, um, and a lot of plants, a lot of plants that work in the greenhouse have really suffered. Um, some of the stuff in the gardens just basically dried out. It was like the Moab. We had so little rainfall here, and uh, it was almost well. You couldn't have kept up with it with the with the hose anyway. So this was requested by my patrons. Uh, it, it got slightly, how can I put it? Not neglected, but uh, I was only really filling up because I was running low on rainwater out of the water butts for the um, actual greenhouse. So I had to be quite selective about when I watered this um, because obviously I didn't want to waste any of that precious water on something that was uh, I want to say less important but I mean less important the plants in the greenhouse obviously take priority now what's happened is as a result of the uh, hot weather some of the pictures or some of the older pictures have filled themselves full of insects and have also sort of like collapsed or fallen over so what I'm going to do is just snip some of those out of the way before I pick you guys up and move you in for a bit of a closer look um, because Things like the Drosera anglica, the little sundews have really taken off. They're all over the place now. And with, with the cooler weather, we're starting to get that second flush of uh, that second flush of pictures from a lot of the Saracenia. Okay, so the best way of doing this effectively is to pick the camera up and actually just hold it and show you the plants. So we've got the two Saracenia Far Harmii um, hybrids. I think they're uh, Oreophila cross leucophila. Um, I'm pretty sure they are. And over the back there is a, I think this is just a straight Oreophila, I'm pretty sure. I oh, know it might be a rubra, I can't actually remember, but it's in there, it's got some lovely veining. Uh, a lot of the pictures got full of water last night because it rained so hard. Uh, Saracenia maroon and Saracenia castebii or Catesby, I can't remember which one it is. But the biggest success has actually been the little Drosera anglica and rotundifolia. Because if I lift you guys down here, you can see they've... Uh, seeded and then just proliferated everywhere they're all over the place i only put three plants in here and almost the 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 media of the the, the bog gardens become really covered there's a darkness there there's also my pinguiclia vulgaris over there i get my head out of the way so you guys can see but they've grown really really well so lots of colors it's full of moisture at the moment, so it's had a really good watering. And there's even a few blooms up here as well. Okay, so as you can see, the uh, bog gardens come along really, really well. A lot of those Drosera anglica have just proliferated across the media. There seems to be a lot less moss and weed growth than last, uh, last time I planted it up. I wonder if that's as a result of me using the, you know, mainly the old uh, peat compost that was in there and it just having that lower uh, nutritional value. So uh, anyway, doing really well. They look beautiful this time of year. This The second flush of pictures you get from most of the Saracenia 
are always much more vibrant. They're really, really beautiful this time of year. So anyway, on to the, uh, the greenhouse section of this video. Um, we're going to be looking at most of my miniature orchids, which are mounted. Some are miniature, but they're not really, because the ones I've got are quite big. But uh, we'll be having a look at those. We'll be struggling to have a look at some of the flowers as well. I'll get the magnifying glass out for that. We've got my Psychopsis up here, which is uh, in bloom at the moment. And there's another flower spike uh, with a bulb, which is just maturing here. Uh, this Phragmopidium flowers constantly. We've got a Sologeny down here as well. The Brassia, which is always doing something. Rosia Glossums in bloom, well, not in bloom, in bud at the moment, in spike, whatever you want to say. Uh, all the plants are really enjoying uh, the drop in temperature. Well, it's not really dropping, it's only 10 o'clock in the morning and it's 20 degrees in here already. The sun's only just crept over the top of the house. So this place is still beginning up to like 26, 27 degrees. But the night times are much, much cooler. We're dropping down, the, the heat is set to come on at 15 degrees. No, 14 degrees, so it keeps temperature around 14 and a half degrees centigrade uh, during the night time here and all the plants, especially the Nepenthes, are like, woo, thank goodness for that. It's much more like their native habitat uh, and the orchid seems to like it as well, where everything seems to go into overdrive, uh, into bloom. Uh, so we're going to be looking at those, some of those orchids, not so much the carnivorous plants unless I find anything which is particularly interesting. I'm still having mould problems, but that's ongoing. Um, so I'll pick you guys up. We'll start at that end of the wall and we'll work slowly down this way. They, they tend to get less miniature. It's sort of like this shape. So they, they start off miniature and they get larger. I, I kind of pack the larger plants down here because actually they take up so much room. I'm, I'm thinking seriously about actually selling a lot of these, moving away from the, 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 big, uh, the big rambunctious plants and concentrating more on the miniature ones and the ones which I can actually mount. I'm actually also considering getting rid of this bench here completely and just doing a whole wall of mounted orchids and just growing everything on mounts because I can actually get more plants in here if I do that. But uh, it's all, um, that's all a bit sort of up in the air at the moment. I'm not really sure what's going on with that. So without further delay, I'll pick you up. We'll start over there and we'll have a little look. Right, directly in front of us, we've got the, uh, the Arides, not a miniature orchid, a vandacious orchid. But remember, we were, I was struggling to grow this, basically, so we decided that putting it just in one of these net pots would be a good idea. And uh, it hasn't died, so that's, that, that's a good thing. We've got nice, fleshy new root here. This root here is in active growth over this side as well. The other roots are sort of, they are alive, but they're more there as sort of anchorage. There's some down there which have uh, produced some new shoots. So that guy's doing all right, despite growing in absolutely no media. It is 90% humidity again in here today. We've got the little Gomeza radicans. When this thing's in flower, it just stays in flower constantly, I swear. The, I find the blooms last a really long time on it. And it smells... I think it smells like a cross between... I think it smells like honey. Honey, but my nose is a bit confused. There's something in here today which stinks. I think it's, there's a gongora down there. And I think the last of the blooms are out and it smells, whatever it's combined with, it smells a bit like vinegar or urine. It's not very nice. Uh, two little dendrochylums I picked up from the orchid show down here. Since potting them up and giving them some cooler temperatures, we've got lots of new growth on these guys. There are only a few grass-like strands when I initially planted them. That one is Wenzelium, Wenzelii, yeah, Wenzelii. And this one is a tenilum. This one I had to have because it just looks like grass and it's growing some nice new threads here. Kind of sluggish. I'm going to try feeding it a little bit more frequently and see if it picks up in speed. Over the back, right over the back in the corner, this is why I keep my restrepia as it likes to hide away over there, uh, especially when the uh, shade cloths up because it keeps uh, it keeps it a little bit more protected. It's hard to pick it up because it's got flower spikes coming on it. All oh, right, let's zoom out here. So there we go, there's this guy. Lots of key keys coming out all over it. There's one of the, the, the insect-like flowers. Just there looking quite nice. It's got very pretty markings, this guy. I've had it for years. There we go. I stop it from moving around too much. There we go. You can see the pretty dots, the yellow and sort of like magenta dots on it, and the unusual morphology of the flower. And that guy just sits over the back here. He's very happy. Just sort of in this location. It's got a few purple markings starting on it, which probably means it's getting a little bit too much light. 
Okay, moving up from that guy, we've got Zootrophian. Uh, this is a, a very much a cool growing orchid. Um, if I can pick it up and zoom out. I picked this one up at the RHS Orchid Show as well and uh, it was really did not appreciate the hot summer weather. It despised it. It's got very unusual flowers when it blooms. So I, what I did was basically got one of these uh, DIY mounts, filled it full of mainly sphagnum moss and some uh, large diameter orchid bark. And then this is Zootrophium hertzii. I think this is the one with yellowish flowers, but it comes from Ecuador. I like plants, little orchids that come from Ecuador. It has all the best uh, miniature orchids, basically. So it hated life um, for a while because it was just too warm, I think. And since then, it's put, put on some nice new growth. And that guy sits over here as well because it's cool, but likes the, likes the shade, that one. There we go, get in there. There we go, he's up there now. Trying to keep the orchids touching each other. There we go. Moving to the left, we've got a division of Isabella virginalis, which has since subsequently in the hot weather dropped all of its leaves. Ergo, it's probably not photosynthesizing. Ergo, it's probably never going to amount to anything, but I don't want to throw it away just in case. My tiny uh, Dendrobium um, dicoides is still blooming. I don't know why, it's m uh, being a maniac this year. Um, lots of new blooms um, and also lots of new growth as well, because I nearly killed it. It's another orchid that struggled. I struggled to get the growing uh, conditions right for this guy for a long time. Produces, uh, there's some pretty little, very bright pinky flowers down there. It's often on Instagram, often put it up on there when it's in bloom and it reliably blooms every year. And that's growing on a piece of, uh, not Hygrolon, um, I can't remember what this stuff's called now. Uh, this man-made fiber. It has got, I can't remember the blooming name of it, but yeah, it grows on that anyway. That retains moisture and keeps it quite happy. Up the top, I can't remember which one this is, we've got the start of my um, Scaphocephalon collection up here. So we've got two here. I think this is Raypax, this one, which is growing just here. I'll pick it up in a minute once we zoomed in. There we go. There we go. So we've got Scaphocephalon Raypax and Scaphocephalon Marinoi here, which is completely mounted on a piece of cork bark, whereas this guy's on one of the DIY uh, orchid mounts. I'll pick them up and we'll have a little look at each one. I also brought the magnifying glass to uh, make things extra uh, exciting if needs be. The trouble with Scaphocephalum, they produce very fine flower spikes that have the ability to sort of penetrate into all of the surrounding plants. That one's been snapped some time ago. We'll pick that one off. There we go. So you've got to be quite careful when you move this around. There we go. Right. So this is Scaphocephalum octodes, this one. And it's got loads and loads and loads of blooms on it. Lots of flower spikes, some new ones going up the back here. Uh, and it's growing, it's, it's really well rooted now into this uh, DIY orchid mount. Have a little look close up. There you go, you can see uh, the way it's sort of really there's no aerial roots, everything's buried itself back into the media like that. Nice lush green growth. I'll try and get some of the flowers in shot for you. There we go. Very unusual yellow, sort of crab-like shaped blooms. But very, very small. My perfect orchid root. I really like Scaphocephalum. I'm a big fan of this, this species of orchid. I find that they tick all the right boxes for me. They're dainty. They're very unusual and very beautiful. Now this is Scaphocephalum marinoi, and this is just growing on a normal piece of cork bark. And it's got this, this is what I mean about these sprawling flower spikes. They just sprawl everywhere, all over the place. Some of them have got to be in excess of 40 centimeters long. And they have very, very pretty wing-shaped sort of sepals on them. If I zoom in, I'll try and isolate one. This will look a bit weird for a minute. And I'll bring one in front of the the camera in my hand. Okay. There we go. So that's what they got, those look like. Very unusual, pretty shaped flowers. And they, they're sort of produced all over the place. They have sort of like yellow bases to the sepals and then sort of like purple stripes and this weird purple tongue that protrudes forward from the flower. And they love it. 
in the greenhouse. They grow so super well. They're fantastic. Lots of fun. And very easy to look after. Oh, I find them very easy to look after. Let's zoom out again. Move a few plants back. Down here we've got some Pluritalis. This is Pluritalis Rowley. Um, no flower spikes this year uh, so far, but it has decided to grow out of that air hole of the pot right the way down there, which is quite unusual. I see some new, some new growth on it, which seems to be a little bit marked up, might have been chomped by something. We still get the odd slug in the greenhouse. Uh, I, I can't seem to keep them out of the garden. I think they, they, they've actually learned to drill underneath the foundations and up now. Um, this is an interesting orchid. This is Pluritalis megalop, so it's incorrectly sold to me and incorrectly labelled. This is a really pretty orchid. I'm going to turn us this way into the greenhouse so the light's slightly better. Uh, I can show you what this guy looks like. So it's just growing on some normal cork bark and it's in bloom at the moment. It produces these really unusual upside down hanging flowers. There's three open at the moment. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and zoom in and show you some of these blooms. There's a nice close up of the plant. And the flowers, there's one by my ring there. And then there's another couple of flowers just in front, you can see. And what I'll do is I'll try and turn some up the other way. Trying to do this on camera with something so small is almost impossible. But we're going to try anyway. Come here, yeah. They're carrying these, they're like a, the thickness of a human hair, these things. They're absolutely so thin. You can actually see through the flower. That's about as close as it's going to focus, I think. I'll see if I can position it somewhere in a minute and get the uh, magnifying glass out. Okay, <laughs> I don't know why you guys put up with this, but we are going to now attempt to look at this flower with the power of magnifying glass. Okay, here we go. And hopefully that is going to give you better detail of what the bloom looks like. So I'm now controlling the camera, controlling a magnifying glass, and controlling the flower as well. I was going to see if we can get sort of a close up as possible. There you go. See the sort of like the hairy frilly edge to the flower. Megalops means like big tongue, which I'm assuming is the uh, the large purple proboscis hanging out the bottom of it. But all in all, a very pretty little flower and a very, very easy to grow little orchid. Let's just zoom out. You can see how tiny those flowers are compared to my hand. They are miniature, a great miniature orchid. A little fussy, really doesn't like the, uh, really doesn't like the hot weather at all, despises it and hates light even more. So it sits down really low next to the, uh, next to the um, Pluritalis down here. Here's an interesting little orchid. Another one from Equigenera. Some of the, the miniature orchids that I got, the ones I didn't have to bag, have been doing really well, and this is one of them. So this is uh, Dikea laxa. I really got into this species. I think they're fantastic. Really interesting genus with very unusual um, sort of growth habits to the, uh, to the plants. No signs of flower spikes. The flower spikes will emerge from between the, the leaf axials here where they meet the parent stem, but it's grown a lot since I've had it. It's almost flat in profile, it's sort of hard to show you on, on the film, but it's like flat and wide. Very unusual plant, but grows really, really well in here. Once again, not too much light. Uh, cool weather, comes from a cloud forest. A similar orchid, which um, has bloomed this year, although it's just, I, I tried to film this, but the flowers are so flipping small, even with the magnifying glass, it's basically impossible to capture them. I'm trying to work out if that's a root down there or a flower of root. So this is um, uh, Chinorchis scalopendra. Look at this guy, it's absolutely mad, I love it. It's a great little orchid, proper miniature as well. The flowers, when they do arrive, are absolutely tiny. See this unusual growth habit, it looks like a stegosaurus or something. Another one that doesn't really like light and likes to dry out in between waterings as well, but it's been growing very, very well for me. Uh, I consider anything as growing well for me if I haven't killed it. <laughs> Popping back up there, there we go. Another scaphocephalum, this time this one, this is a cynum. This was from um, uh, Equigenera as well. No new uh, leaves on this guy yet. 
potted the same time as the other ones that we had to bag. There's been some new growth coming out of it as well, a few new leaves. I'm not too worried about that. The guy's done really, really well, I think. Over here, Poroglossum. This is Poroglossum delstromii. No blooms on it yet. Some nice new leaves, though. It's got this it's like heavily veined. I'm not sure it will come out on camera, but it's got this, this typical Poroglossum veined appearance to the leaves. Some new leaves coming out down there. And this guy seems to be doing all right. Like once, when you like the ones I had to bag, you get I get suspicious, overly suspicious. Let's have a look at what we've got down over here. We've got a great big Gomeza flexuosa, or, or, or on, was Oncidium flexuosum. This guy here, loads of roots. I don't know what to do with this, but I'm pretty sure growing it in a pot is not the answer anymore. I think we need to mount this guy. And see what I was saying about scaphosepalum flowers? This is what I mean. See, this is uh, coming off of. Uh, Oh, get out of it. This is uh, Scaphosepalum bicristatum, and it just grows into everything. It's a good, like, half a metre long flower spikes, which are very difficult to control. They just go meanders wherever they want to go, really. This is a uh, Poroglossum amethystinum. Not anything really particularly remarkable to look at on this. Some new leaves. Recently repotted. Uh, another recently repotted orchid. This is Poroglossum shramii. We'll just have a look down once I clear it up. You can see it has been in flower uh, recently. I've got some old dead flower spikes sticking out from the foliage here and here. They're all dead. That's dead. Yeah, no new flesh flower spikes on here. These are good clean up. There's a few little dead leaves and stuff in here. But I repotted this guy earlier in the year into just pure sphagnum moss. Well, actually, no, it's not. It's got a little bit of growth stone in there as well just to keep the air moving. And it's sort of doubled in size. I mean, that's a pretty big miniature orchid now. That's in a four inch pot, so it's pretty big. Right, onto the tangled mess of Scaphocephalum. Behind this uh, Pluritalis restripioides, which we've got in front of us here, this big one here, uh, we've got almost Scaphocephalum. If you lift this guy, you'll be able to see how big this is next to my hand it's an absolute monster this is but this produces the most beautiful flowers not really a miniature orchid see this little pursed thing here this bud this is where the blooms originate from and i think we're going to be in luck this year because all of these are swelling so we might end up having sort of like six or seven flower spikes on this and there's a little tiny uh pinguiclia growing out the bottom of that as well so i'll move this guy out of the way so we can get some space hang on a minute do, 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 do. Let's pop him over there. We end up sort of unpacking the greenhouse when we do these videos. Okay, so this is the pouch of Scaphocephalum. They're, they're, these are all Scaphocephalum in front of us. We've got, um, I can't even blooming remember. I'm gonna have to come around the other side of the green, the other side of the, 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 the Come around the other side of the camera for this. We've got a little, little tiny fella here. This is uh, another one for Equigena. This is Bicristatum. New leaf, but no, it's still such a small plant. Uh, I'm not really expecting anything from it. This guy's in flower, or n very nearly in flower. It says, this is Scaphocephalum digital, or digital, and it produces enormous, enormous for Scaphocephalum flowers. There's one by my finger there, not open just yet, nearly open. I reckon in the next 48 hours, these guys here will open up. You can see it there. And they're sort of round purple, and they've got these sort of white wings some more there because it's a tiny tiny plant there's, there's my finger next to it but it pr produces disproportionately large flowers especially for a scaphocephalum and that's really really cool i've only flowered it successfully it only flowered successfully at the beginning of uh, summer last year um, since then it hasn't done anything because it was just uh, just too hot they really don't like it it's definitely not as cool as an ecuadorian cloud forest in this greenhouse in summer so hiding just to the left, just to the right, this is Scaphocephalum bicristatum, and I will try and untangle it from all of the other uh, Scaphocephalum. This is a much rounder leafed variety, and it looks quite a lot like ray packs, so there are some significant differences. But these flower spikes just go on, so here's the plant, and these fly spikes just go on and on and on and on. They've got to be in excess of 60 centimetres, some of them. And so you can see why they just get tangled up in everything. I'm going to zoom you guys in and then I'll hold up one of the flower spikes and we'll get a close up. Oh. 
Okay, so hopefully you guys can see that. Very unusual shaped flowers again. Very pretty. Uh, very keen to grow into everything else around it. I'm just having a look over the back. So I've got, so I've got quite a few scaphocephalum over the back. It's definitely a, a, a genus I'm very much in love with at the moment. I wish I could afford some more, which is why I'm, I'm considering flogging a lot of orchids off and um, using the money to buy lots of lovely new scaphocephalum because I find them just intriguingly beautiful. So I've got a, a scaphocephalum ondontic hylum over the back and then there's a scaphocephalum uh, macrodactylum and this guy has got tiny, tiny flowers. None of them, I'm just looking. So I'm not going to bother showing it to you, he hasn't got anything out. None of them are out at the moment, which is a shame because they are proper miniature. Right. So we're going to get onto this monster now. This is uh, Scaphocephalum gibberosum, but I'm going to have to get it out to actually show you because it's, I think it's classed as a miniature orchid, but it's pretty damn big. With the flower spikes, it's basically unhandleable. Right, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to attempt to untangle it from everything. It's even tied up into this, uh, what are you, uh, Ornithorhynchum. Ornithophora, ornith whatever it is. I don't know, this thing's about to come into flower. Uh, where do I put stuff down? You can hang out. No, you can't. Oh, it's going on the floor. Uh, uh, okay. Okay, so remember, this is a miniature orchid, apparently. Oh, I don't think it is. I don't classify it as a miniature orchid because it's flipping massive. There we go. Right. It's a shame, really. I, I should have this in a more of a prominent location because it is pretty big and it'd be nice to show it off. So this is Scaphocephalum uh, gibberosum and it has got hundreds of open flowers on it at the moment. Just so many. And they all sort of get all... T they, they, they sort of grow in a zigzag fashion so they all sort of cross over each other which makes untangling them basically impossible. So hopefully you guys can see that in some detail there. Beautiful plant, it grows really, really well for me. So that's always a winner. It's always going to be one of my favourites. I'll uh, put it down here and then I'll pick up some of the blooms and I'll see if I can show you some with the magnifying glass. Okay, directly in front of you, you've got some of the unusual flowers of Scaphocephalum gibberosum. They've got this long sort of tongue and then these thick sepals which then thin out to like sort of like needle like uh, width is, widths. Very, very unusual, very pretty looking plant. Um, I, and I'm going to use some of the patented Oliver's Greenhouse magnifying glass now. So hopefully you're going to get... Okay, so onward with the show. I'm going to try and put this guy back in here. I like having all my scaffolds. I like to organise my plants so that I have genuses uh, together because uh, it makes it easier when I'm trying to find something in particular. But also, it just it's not neuroticism, but it's just it's a nice way of tidying and organising things. So he's back in there anyway. Over the back, we've got some stellis. These are one of the, the one or two of my stellis orchids. This one is, I can't remember, I'm so bad at this, it's ridiculous. This is Das Phyla, and it's just become a hedge of plants, basically. All the roots are sort of wrapping around the back of the, um, the cork there, and it's, you, you water it by watering just the whole thing, just spray it. You can see how much it blooms. This one tends to bloom in spring, and it produces loads of very, very tiny little flowers, all held on these, uh, on these little spikes here. It's very pretty, very lush green orchid. At the moment, it will just spend all of winter in, in foliage mode. Here's another Stellis. This is Busy Ruler. Since uh, potting this guy, I've had no blooms. I mounted it. I've had no blooms on it yet, but it just grows like a machine. It is just absolutely, just grows so quickly. It's insane. It started off as only a tiny little thing. Um, and since then, it's really taken off. It's got a quite attractive growth habit. I like it even just as a foliage plant, it's very pretty and I'm hoping that next year we'll have, uh, we'll have some nice blooms on it. 
Okay, I've taken a giant leap with the uh, tripod to move us along the bench. We're progressing nicely now. Underneath here is another Daikia. I think this is Daikia. I can't actually remember. I'm awful at this. Uh, it's stuck underneath this Stellis as well. Right, come on you. There we go. Another one, I keep it tucked underneath other plants because it doesn't like... Uh, this is Histracina, Dikea Histracina. It's another one that came from Equigenera. And it's got very pretty, dainty foliage. You can see how big it is next to my thumb. It it's really is a very, very small plant. And lots of new shoots coming from it. And I'm hoping to get some blooms uh, later on this year. It's unusual the way this piece is sort of like bent back on itself. There are some, you won't be able to see them, but there are some very tiny X flower spikes underneath it here. Um, you won't be able to see on the camera because they're just so tiny. Um, but another, this very typical sort of uh, terret leaved, um, stegosaurus -y looking plant, a proper miniature, and that guy just sits underneath there, out of the way. Lovely job. Okay, here's one of the Oliver's Greenhouse success stories. As those of you who've been with the channel for a long time will remember, this is my uh, little tiny, um, uh, Isabelia uh, Neolucia, I think it is. This was down to like three um, pseudo bulbs and like one functioning leaf at one point. <laughs> Since then, we took it out of the, the, the pot and stuff that it was in when it was just hating its life and we mounted it. And since then, it's become an absolute machine. It's growing really, really, really well. Lots of uh, new roots. And uh, it's actually getting too big for the mount now, so I need to probably snip this bit off up by my finger here and move it further down. Nice big plump pseudo bulbs here as well. Uh, this sits up next to my Isabelia virginalis because obviously they're basically the same thing or very similar. No flowers on it this year so far, though, which is a little bit disappointing. Tell a lie, is that a flower spike? Oh, it is going to bloom. There is a flower spike on it. There's a couple of flower spikes. This is going to be tricky. Out comes the magnifying glass again, people. Otherwise, there's no way you're going to see it. I have wondered, this thing hasn't flat. I've had this orchid since, oh, I don't know, 2000 and, I don't know, three or something like that. And it's flowered once for me because I was basically still in the process of trying to kill it. Let's move down here as well where I can hold you in the lights slightly better. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try and show you an emerging flower spike. You might actually be able to see it just by my finger. Coming at the top of that bulb. See that sort of torpedo shaped lump, which is about, about there with the purple top on it. That is a, an emerging flower spike. And there's another one over on one of the pseudo bulbs on this side as well. So it is gonna bloom. It produces pretty little um, purple flowers. I'm sticking back up here. He sticks up, he lives up here next to Isabelia virginalis. Like I said, I need to do something with that. This guy here. It's a great orchid, this one. What's that? Oh, it's got a sneaky woodlouse on it. Damn you. Scuttling cephalopod thing. And then you can go, hang on a minute whilst I just feed this to my uh, Nepenthes. There we go. Yeah. Excellent, right, there we go. This is Is Isabelia virginalis. Didn't like the root disturbance. I repotted it and it it's sort of went a bit, ugh, what's happened to me? Since then though, lots of new growth um, and growing really well. It's turning into quite a sizable little plant now, this guy. Really happy with that. So those guys grow right next to each other. Ah, there we go, like that. We'll try us a blonger. Uh, it's, like it's basically like a Bulbophyllum. Um, Got these very round, sort of definitely a miniature orchid, these round pseudo bulbs. No bloom this year, which is uh, disappointing. The flowers hang out at the bottom of the pseudo bulbs and they're sort of triangular shaped, yellow, unusual little thing. Popping back in there without making too much of a mess. Uh, Bulbophyllum barbigerum, this guy over here, one of my favourite orchids in the greenhouse. Still haven't sussed out how to flower it properly yet. It's never flowered successfully. It's produced flower spikes, which have all died off. That's just a bit of, um, what's it called? Um, fertilizer salts on there. Just where they must have been sprayed recently. Um, there is, a, there is a, what looks to be a flower spike emerging on it again this year. I oh, know, tell it not, it's just new growth. So let's give you a, a close-up look at this thing anyway. So 
This is a bulbifying and barbigerum, very flat, penny shaped pseudo bulbs. Very unusual growth habit. It produces the most incredible flowers, but only obviously if you can get it to bloom. And I have not managed it yet. I think it gets too cool. By the time it gets to a flowering time, it's, the temperatures drop too much in the greenhouse, so it gets proper cold and doesn't have a chance to, uh, to actually bloom properly. So that's almost coming to the end of the miniature orchid, um, the miniature orchids, because I don't have any more left, I don't think. Let's have a look, quick look at the rest of the dikeas. So this is where the other dikeas live. This is Dikea trula, this long thing here, got from Equigenera. I think there's some dead flower spot, some dead old stems on here which need nibbling off. There is a, uh, a new bud which is emerging down by my hand over there. And over the other side, we've got Dikea trula. No, it's not trula, that's trula, tenuous, this one. This great big green, fluffy, foliaged thing over here. It's fantastic, I really like the way they grow. Most unusual looking orchids, I like things that look different. So that's a, that's a very cool orchid. Um, what else have we got? Let's have a look at some things which are in flower before we end this video. Okay, so we've covered the miniature orchids now pretty much. So let's have a look at some of those orchids which are in bloom, which aren't necessarily miniature. So we've got the last of uh, Gongora, uh, which was Galliata here. It's got a few, a few flowers. I think it's this. Oh, it's, pretty, it's, it's sweeter when you get close to it. It smells quite sweet, but from a distance, the whole greenhouse just it smells like pee. It smells like someone's got had a wee in here at some point recently. So uh, I think that's what's responsible for stinking up the greenhouse. We've got uh, the bloom on Rosio Glossum Grande, which is not not opened yet, but it's producing this nice big flower spike, and the the petals which have not opened yet are starting to colour up. If I hold this guy up, hopefully you're going to see that nice big flower spike coming out of there. I don't like to uh, stake my uh, flower spikes very often. I will do if they're in jeopardy of actually snapping, but most of the time I find they'll, um, there's, just no, there's just no need to basically because they hang naturally as they would in the wild and I like things to look natural in the way they grow. Um, here's another nice one. My Epidendrum pore packs is going into flowering mode over there as well. It's not quite open yet, but it's getting there. There's this Cylogeny uh, Fimbriata. I'm sure this is Fimbriata. I haven't even labelled it. I'm that positive. And it's got lots and lots of flowers on it as well. These weird brown sort of furry lipped blooms all over it. It's a, a very easy to grow species of Cylogeny. Um, if you can get hold of a little division of one of these, I suggest doing so because unless you're a complete maniac, you won't, you won't struggle to grow this plant. No smell. Oh no, it does smell. Maybe it's you, maybe it's a combination of the Cylogeny Fimbriata and the, uh, the, uh, and the Gongora down there, which are, oh, oh, makes my nose tickle. I'm making my greenhouse smell like urine today. I'm gonna pop this guy back down in here. Whoop. There we go, lovely. We've got, this needs a tidy up, it's got some dead leaves on it and an old dead flower spike. So this is a Phragmopidium cardinale. This was given to me as a present and it's got lots of, I'm going to walk quite carefully, lots of new growth emerging from down low in the plant down here. Uh, this is an old dead flower spike that needs sniffing off. I haven't got my snippers in here. I never have, they're either in the house or in the greenhouse, but they're never where I, where I actually need them to be. So. Got a nice uh, flower, fresh flower spike over here with a nice open bloom. Lots of new flower spikes coming. This flower spike's just coming to an end up here. Another one there, and there's a brand new flower spike just emerging by my hand there. And lots of new fans of, of growth emerging down the bottom. This thing's, I like Phragmopidium, I love the blooms, I think they're stunning, but they take up so much room. This is still a small plant, it's going to get absolutely colossal yet. Yeah? I don't know what I'm going to do with it. It lives on the floor because I just can't, I've got no other place to store it basically. Uh, so it lives right down low. It seems quite happy down there though. The next plant of, of note, which are, in fact the last plant I'm going to show you, we're going to end on, end on a high note. So it's a first time bloomer, 
for me. Ugh. Ugh. The Cilogeny Fimbriatus made my face intensely itchy. I don't know why. Maybe I'm allergic to it. So I've never grown a Cycopsis before. This one I bought on a whim. Uh, and it's originally from Schwerter. And uh, this is Cycopsis Mariposa, I think, which is a hybrid. But, and it's a sequential bloomer. And it produces the most stunning, almost hand-sized flowers on these immensely long canes. I mean, the plants here, that's got to be... I don't know, 700, 70 centimetres, 80 centimetres, maybe, you know, it's, it's approaching a metre in length. And there's two flower spikes. This one's not open yet, and this one is due to open, well, it's fully open. No noticeable scent. I'll zoom in and see if we can uh, have a bit of a closer look at it. There we go, that's a good shot crazy beautiful colors stunning stunning plant and it's a sequential bloomer so when this blooms done don't cut the stem off because uh it will produce another bud and flower again and that is uh, a first time bloomer for me and i'm very very pleased with that that's a really really cool cool looking orchid very cool looking orchid almost rabbit like with these ears so yeah chuffed to bits with that Okay, so time for some announcement, or, or the announcement, really, not some announcement, there's only one announcement, but uh, it is rather significant. So I'm going to put this guy over here, just out of the way. I have to do it quite carefully because I'm famously bad at breaking flower spikes off of orchids, especially ones I've waited for a long time for. So some of you may already know, especially those of you that follow Oliver's Greenhouse religiously or certainly been with me from, from the beginning, I'm a tree consultant, I'm an arboricultural consultant, I'm a specialist in trees, that's what I do, that's how I make my money, it's how I pay for my house, my family, the greenhouse, everything basically. Uh, you know, I'm the main earner, I'm the only earner in the family, so I have three other dependents as well. So at times money can be tight, but whatever, that's completely immaterial. Um, what is most important and what's going to be most, uh, sig most significant thing to occur uh, going forward from this point is that uh, I've stupidly started uh, my level six arboriculture, okay, which is uh, the same as a BSc uh, in trees, basically. It's a BSc in, in, in all aspects of arboriculture. So that's a course, it's gonna, the, the first part, we do the, the national, you do the certificate first, and that takes a year. Then after that, you can then transfer that on to do the diploma. So I'm gonna basically be tied up for two years uh, for the full-time coursework. I go in every two weeks to college, have a day's lecturing, get a metric ton of coursework. I did level four before this a few years ago and I remember how much of an impact that had on my family life and everything else. And it really does require an immense amount of work. Um, so level six is gonna be horrific, I expect, but at the end of it, it will put me in the top sort of I don't know, 20% of arboriculturists in the UK, which is going to be really, really good. And it means I'm going to be able to earn more, potentially start my own business, yada, yada, yada. So as a result, that may impact on the, how, the frequency at which I upload. Um, in fact, I say may, I think it probably is going to. What I'll do is I'll set aside a day at the weekend to try and get some content filmed. So for example, today I've already filmed three videos um, and that's going to tie me up editing sort of on and off it's the, making the videos isn't the hard bit that's a very easy bit to do and the difficulty and the time consuming bit is editing because i like to film a lot of material and then a lot of the stuff i strip down because it's just me babbling on about completely random rubbish that you don't want to hear about strip it all down and i will spend sort of two hours editing maybe three hours maybe even more for some of the bigger videos editing videos for you to watch um, so it's going to be a bit of a juggling act but stick with me and uh, we're gonna, we've got, like I said, we've done a lot of, up, lot of um, uh, we've tried a lot of new things today. We've done, or recently, we've done the antifungal spray for the cephalotus. We've done the spag and bag for some of the miniature orchids, which weren't doing so well. So there's some cool updates coming. So just stick, stick with me, and uh, I will promise I will continue to make um, content as long as I physically can. If it gets to the point where I literally haven't got the time to uh, produce content, um, I will be making a video, but um, I will potentially, I may, if it, if it becomes too much of a struggle, I'm gonna close Oliver's greenhouse down, basically, because I can't, I can't, the, the, the division of time um, won't allow me to continue making 
um, content and staying on top of that work. I mean, the first year is not going to be that hectic. By, by the time the second year diploma comes around, it's going to be every f spare moment I've got. I remember when I did level four, it was at least four hours a night on, on course for every single night and at least a whole day of every weekend spent on doing coursework. So with level six, I'm expecting that workload to double. So it's not going to leave me much time. So if it gets to that point, I will make a video and I'll warn you. I'll also warn all of you, my patrons, because obviously there'll be no point in supporting me if I'm not making you any content. Um, so we'll, ha we'll reassess the situation in a few months' time. It won't be a permanent shutdown of Oliver's Greenhouse, but it will have to be for the duration of time which the, my course is running. That has obviously got to come first. So uh, I don't think it will come to that. I think we'll be okay. Like I say, if I, if I can get a backlog of, um, of, of, of media to upload, then we're going to be okay, but uh, it just if I if I look haggard and burnt out, well, you'll know what's happening. So, anyway, thanks for tuning in. I really hope you've enjoyed this look around some of my miniature orchids or not so miniature orchids. And uh, don't forget to give us a thumbs up, like down below if you've enjoyed this content. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the little bell notification uh, so that you get notified every time I upload something. And uh, stay tuned for another episode of Oliver's Greenhouse.